Oh, <laughs> hey y'all, welcome to today's video. Y'all scared me, y'all just popped in here out of nowhere. I was just minding my own little business. Anyway, welcome to today's video. <laughs> y'all, today I am wanting to share, you saw the title, Let's Talk Lunches, okay? I want to share some things today that this is probably going to be a long video because I'm going to share lunch ideas, and there's a bunch of them, y'all. <laughs> I got my notes here. I had to take them out of my binder so I could get them right here. I want to share lunch ideas and lunch essentials, lunch box essentials, um, to make those lunches more exciting people kids grown-ups you're all getting tired of eating the same lunches all the time peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are getting old bologna sandwiches are getting old Ch sandwiches and chips is getting old okay y'all you can jazz up your lunches and if you'll stick with me and grab you a pen and some paper get a little fin fancy pen if you want to grab you some paper be ready to take some notes because I've got some ideas, y'all. This is not just for kids. This is for grown-ups, too, to where you're not having to take the same thing for lunch every day. Some of these may be to where you may have to heat them up. Some of these you may not have to heat up, but they don't have to be boring. So if y'all will hold tight and hang in there with me, go get you a little snacky snacky, get you something to drink so you can wet your whistle. And like I said, this may be a long one, but I think we're going to do it, okay? So y'all just hold tight. Let's get started, okay? So go get that stuff and meet me right back here, okay? Hey y'all, welcome to our channel. My name is Tracy and I'm the keeper of the home here at 4D Farms, where we are all about faith, family, home, and farm, and in that order. And we're kind of like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. So y'all just come on in, grab a seat, take a look, and have a listen, cause you don't wanna miss a thing. <laughs> All right, did y'all go get your stuff? All right, let's get started. My name is Tracy. I'm the keeper of the home at 4D Farms. Welcome to my channel, okay? Y'all, I am also Tracy from uh, our blog, 4dfarms.blogspot.com, okay? Y'all, I had my blog before YouTube was even a thing, okay? And I've had some of my followers from 18 years ago that's been following me and my family on our blog all these years that have discovered me on YouTube and saw that I was on YouTube and now they're joining me here. So y'all come on in and join us. Grab a seat, grab your, you got your pen and a piece of paper, okay? So let's get started. Y'all, I, I love having our blog along with YouTube because there are some people that don't like to sit down and watch videos, but yet are readers and they like written and readable tutorials, okay? And I'm so glad some of my blog followers have found me on YouTube and we're kind of getting them into the YouTube video world, virtual world, so you can see what people look like, you can hear people, whether they're crazy or not. <laughs> And grow with people and, and more friends and, you know, just a different way of, of communicating, okay? So, I'm so glad y'all have jumped over there from here and then I, or to here from there. And then I've had some people that has just known me from YouTube. Now, they're going to our blog and picking out good information, okay? Just like I told y'all, when you go to our blog... 4dfarms.blogspot.com, okay? In the subheader up there, there's like daily posts, okay, or weekly, just depends on how busy I am, okay, updates. But up at the top, there's a subheader with more titles in it. If you click on one of those titles that interests you, like gardening, 
bam, you click on it, it takes you to that gardening page, and it's all about gardening, how we got started, how to get started, how to grow a garden, how we grow every single thing in our garden, how we plant them, how we take care of them. I take you through the whole process, canning and preserving. Ooh, y'all better grab a snack for that one because that baby's long. You might want to bookmark it, and you can always come back to it later because this sucker's long. But I put all that information out there, y'all, because, like I said, some people are readers, some people are visual, okay? So I do both. I do our blog, and I do our, our channel, okay? Let me wet my whistle a minute. Oh, oh y'all. Okay, now let's talk lunches. In the second half of this video, I'm at home, okay? Th this video has been shot over two separate time periods, and I shot that one at home because I'm like, you know what? I better do this right now because... I, I, got, I can show all my stuff. I get to show y'all all my stuff, okay? And then I'm like, I can do the other sit-down part of it later. Well, it's later, and I'm doing that now. Okay? Okay. So, I dropped my fancy pen. Okay. So, lunches, y'all, does not have to be boring, okay? It, you get tired of the same old thing every day, okay? And I know, like, a lot of people will just take the night before his leftovers to work the next day and heat them up. That's good. That's good. You're still getting a meal at work. But like people who don't have access to a microwave or um, something like that, but yet you're tired of sandwiches because it's got to be something that you don't have to heat up, I got you covered. I got a bunch of ideas, y'all. So are y'all ready? We're gonna go through each category, y'all. We're gonna go through like a main dish or the main part of your meal, which is either gonna be some kind of sandwich or something, okay? Or something that you can use in place of a sandwich. The main part, main course, okay? Then we're gonna kinda like go through the pyramid, okay? We're gonna go through like, um, your, your sides, like your, your vegetables, okay? You know how like you're packing a lunch, you get a section, okay? Then like your little snacks, okay? Or um, uh, treats, okay? Like a little dessert or something, some kind of fruit or something, okay? They don't have to be boring, all right? And then just other little things in there, we'll cover all that, but two things I wanna say. If you are dealing with preschoolers and kindergartners and it is time you decide, hey, I want to pack their lunches. I had one kid in school, y'all, that when I homeschooled, I fixed them lunch, okay? I had that time to fix them lunch. Or they could eat anything they wanted to eat, okay? They could get in there and make their self lunch, whatever. But when they started public school, of course, they were older, okay? So, one was okay with the school food. He would go in there and get them spicy fries all day long every day. He did not get tired of those things, okay? There were some things he wouldn't eat because he's just like that less nasty, okay? And he was a picky eater anyway, okay? So, but he ate the same thing every stinking day, and I'm like, son, do you not get tired of that? Would you like to take your lunch? You know, we can pick you up some lunch stuff when we get his lunch stuff, okay? I'm fine, Mom. I'm fine. I got this. Okay, I heard that all them teenage years. I got this, Mom. Okay. So, he did his own thing in school. He ate the school food, school breakfast, cafeteria food, everything. Our youngest one, y'all, some of that food just made him sick. He would come home with belly aches every day. Some things he was not tolerant to, okay? He just could not eat them. So we had to purchase his lunch things. And it was things that we knew he could eat, okay? So we did one school lunches. We did one lunchbox lunches, okay? So 
it depends on your kids what they can handle okay and do you have a place every day that you can eat i know a lot of people is like man it's getting expensive to just go out here every day and and grab something with the rest of the guys and 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 have some lunch just just got my eye uh have some lunch and you know you're spending all that money eating out every day that adds up y'all to wind up being more than what you can go and pick up your stuff to make your lunches at home. That's a rabbit hole. I won't chase that one right now, but we might cover it sometime later on in the future. Anyway, um, it gets expensive, okay? And then I know sometimes you can't take your lunch, you know, because you're like, all right, I got my lunch box, but the guys is going here. I don't want to look like an oddball, so I'll go too. Well, sometimes you're going to have to pick your battles, okay? Whatever you may be in a grown up may be in a situation where you've got a micro, you've got access to a microwave. You, you're in an office or something, and you can bring some things and put in a refrigerator and put your name on it, have it there for the whole week and stash it. Whatever or daily fix your lunch. Whatever these ideas are for kids in school, teenagers all the way up to adults, and I will tell you how to use everything. Okay. Um, second disclaimer, if you're sending preschool and, um, kindergartners to school, make sure a week before school, if it's new things, practice with them, opening them up, like unzipping the lunch boxes. Preschoolers have to learn that hand mobility, okay? So, you need to work with preschoolers and teach them how to unzip, teach them how to open packages, teach them how to open up containers, lids, snap-on lids, make sure they know how to line it up, snap it down, lock it in place, or get that sucker open, okay? Y'all, some of them things are hard for preschoolers. They're sitting there struggling, okay? And, um... Packages. Have you ever seen a little one try to open up a bag of chips, y'all? Like, and then all of a sudden, when it does open up, it goes everywhere. Okay. Practice with your kids. I'm throwing this in there to help teachers out, okay? Because, y'all, a teacher is responsible for so many children at her table. It's hard for her. And some of these people, some of these kids only get 30 minutes to sit down and eat, 25 at the least. Okay, she still got to eat too, but she's spending like 15 minutes of her time going around to all her students, opening packages, opening cartons of milk, opening water bottles, opening containers, unzipping lunch boxes. Y'all, come on, give her a break, okay? She needs to eat too. She's got to teach her kids. She needs her energy, okay? She needs her sneakers, okay? <laughs> she needs to eat, okay? Practice with your kids. Help these teachers out. Make sure they know how to open things. They know how to open containers. They can shut them if you don't want to mess in that lunchbox when you get home. If it's a preschooler, don't send a lot of messy foods, okay? Teacher don't have time to be going around wiping mouths and hands and, and cleaning their clothes because they've got it all over them, okay? Help the teacher out, y'all. Send some things that are not so messy and we've got ideas, okay? Uh, what else? Um, another one that's going to help teachers out, y'all, but y'all might not favor this too well, but I understand because you wouldn't do this to yourself and you wouldn't want somebody doing it to you either. So pay close attention. Are you listening? A lot of schools are cracking down on sweet stuff. And I'll tell you why. Don't get mad. Well, that's all my kid will eat. It's easier to just grab some little Debbie's off the thing or, or grab that Capri Sun and that juice box. Yes, it is. And they're probably less expensive. Yes. However, have y'all been in a room? You by yourself. Have you been in a room with a bunch of hyped up, sugar-spiced kids that's bouncing like a pinball machine off the walls? And then all of a sudden they crash. Then they get 
cranky, tired, irritable, okay? And you're the only one in that room with about 10 kids, all just like that. You know how you tell your mama with your grand, with your kids, you tell their grandma, now don't sugar all them up before you send them home with me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Don't sugar all them babies up and then send them to school for them to deal with. And they're bouncing off the walls and then all of a sudden they crash and your kid don't feel like doing school the rest of the day because they feel like crap because they've crashed, because the sugar's wore off. Okay, yes, it's good for like... 15, 20 minutes, but when it's wore off, y'all, it's wore off, and you're not the one who has to deal with them, and you wouldn't want somebody just hyping up your kids with a bunch of sugar and then leaving you with them either. Gotcha, okay? Help the teachers out, y'all. Not a lot of sugary stuff, okay? Make, we'll get into this, okay? And the sugary drinks, y'all. If you want to send your kid with some Kool-Aid to school, maybe change the sweetener to a natural sweetener like Stevia or something that doesn't have all this corn syrup in it, doesn't have all this cane sugar, processed sugar, okay? Y'all, another thing, you know what happens to your brain, <laughs> okay? We as grown-ups, y'all, we, we know this, okay? We gotta have that caffeine or something that all of a sudden it wears it off, it wears off and we crash. You know, like that two o'clock afternoon crash when you're like, okay. Y'all, a kid cannot handle what we can handle. They don't know how to handle their emotions. They don't know how to handle their hunger. They don't know how to handle their irritability, okay? Sugar does not help. When they crash, their brains slow down, and then y'all, they're not even going to want to do school. It creates a learning barrier because their brain shuts down, okay? It stops wanting to take in information. It slows them down, okay? All they want to do is sleep. They're not alert. They're not awake. They're not going to want to pay attention. They're want to just going to want to, can I lay my head down, teacher, please? Okay? And they're going to crash. They're going to go to sleep. Then they're going to miss. Okay? Teachers, I'm just trying to help y'all out some. I get it. I understand. Okay? And a lot of schools are just going to water now. Okay? Unless they get that milk or something with their lunches or their breakfasts. Okay? Y'all help the teachers out, Okay? Just try to cut back on some of the sugar, okay? Another thing is, y'all, I know a lot. These kids are on schedules. The little ones, and it goes by age groups. Of course, the little ones need to eat first. Then you've got that preteen age in there, um, elementary, preteen, junior high. Y'all, have you been in a room with a bunch of hungry preteens? <laughs> They will eat you up. They will eat you up, okay? They get cranky, okay? Whew. This is why, and then teenagers in high school, y'all, they get hungry, okay? Just because they're older doesn't mean their body is like, okay, I need some food. I'm beginning to just space out here. You're not you when you're hungry, y'all. You don't feel like doing a cotton-picking thing. Imagine carrying that down to smaller ones. They don't know how to handle their hunger, but the older ones, y'all, they may know how to handle that hunger and control themselves and control their their feelings and their emotions and their actions, but they're still hungry. They're still going to get cranky, okay? And they need to eat too. This is the reason why, y'all, I stress uh, sending your kids off to school with a good breakfast or at least making sure you get them there maybe a little ahead of time so they can grab breakfast. And some schools now will serve, bring breakfast to the classrooms. Please sign your kids up and get them there early enough to where they can get them some breakfast if you didn't have time to get it at home. Y'all, there's nothing like seeing a kid hungry, okay? And knowing that it's gonna be a while before they eat and they don't have anything. Y'all, my heart can't take it. 
If a kid is hungry, I'm going to feed them. Okay? I'm going to feed them. So, but in the morning times, this is the reason why I stress make-ahead breakfasts. First of all, you're cutting out your time in the mornings, but yet you are still providing a good, nutritious breakfast for your kids before they go to school. You're not hyping them up on a bunch of sugar and then sending them to school. It's something that's going to stick with them, stick to their bones until they do get to go eat lunch, okay? Until it's their time to eat lunch. That's the reason why when my kids were in junior high and high school, I, I did all the make-ahead breakfast. I had something in the refrigerator that they could grab right quick heat up in the microwave, sit down and eat something, okay? And, or like when they become of drivable age, they were able to just grab and go, eat it on the way. It, however I could get breakfast in my kid that morning was how I was going to do it. If it was grab and go and eat going down the road, or if it was sitting down, heating up something really quick, sitting down and eating it, okay? I didn't have time every morning to make a big old breakfast before everybody had to rush out the door or before I got them to school, okay? So I would take a day and I would just breakfast burritos, breakfast bowls, uh, sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits, sausage, egg, and cheese bagel, sausage, egg, and cheese something kind of kind of sandwich, okay? And then individually wrap them and put them in the refrigerator, okay? So that way that would tide them over until they got to eat. Some of these teenagers, y'all are not getting to eat till one o'clock. Can you imagine being up at 6 o'clock in the morning and then not getting to grab a breakfast before you catch the bus and not getting to school in time to get a breakfast and your kids having to wait till 1 o'clock to eat? No wonder they don't want to do nothing. No wonder they want to go to sleep on their desk. I would too. I'm not me when I'm hungry, y'all. Nobody is. So I'm just going to back up and stress the importance of breakfast. Try to get something in your kids before school time. If that means getting up a few minutes earlier, y'all, so be it, okay? If that means taking a day to make some make-ahead quick, easy meals, y'all, you can go get a can of biscuits, some pre-made patties that all you got to do is heat them up and get you some eggs, Make your own breakfast sandwiches. If you can, get the box of Jimmy Dean's breakfast sandwiches and put them in the refrigerator or the freezer. Please get some breakfast in your kids in the morning. I'm an advocate for feeding some hungry kids, okay? Because, hey, we're grown-ups. We know what it's like to be hungry, okay? I can remember sometimes, y'all, when we had to catch the bus and it was winter time. We didn't have a lot of money. Okay, we were in that era. We didn't have a lot of money. Our mama didn't have a lot of money. But y'all, we walked out of there with like some cinnamon and sugar toast, cinnamon, sugar, and butter toast, and some hot chocolate. And then we would see that school bus coming and we would rush to put our coats on and then go out there. We were warm because we had that hot chocolate and we had that breakfast, okay? We had something in our bellies. Okay, and a loaf of bread, well, loaf of bread costs a lot these days, but anyway, a loaf of bread and, and something to drink, some milk, chocolate milk, milk, orange juice, something in your kid before they go to school, okay? Because like I said, some of these kids are not getting lunch till later on in the day and they are hungry, okay? Enough about breakfast. Find a way to get some quick breakfast in your kids in the morning or get up early enough to sit down and have some breakfast with your kids in the mornings before they go to school. Okay, enough about breakfast. Now let's start covering some of these lunches. Okay, so y'all, I'm going to have to have my glasses for this because I got to see my writing, okay? So let's start with some lunch ideas. Um, let's start with like, if you want to... I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all, I covered this in the second part. Something is all over my glasses. Oh my gosh, I can't see. Let me clean these while I talk a minute. If you can do hot lunches, here's the trick. And I'll show you in the second, I'll probably show you in the second part of the video. I, there is some things, y'all, that I will spend a little more money on and I will invest on a good water bottle. 
one that is not gonna break, a cheaply plastic one that's gonna break if they drop it really good. I would, I would invest in a good water bottle. I would invest in a good lunch box that, and I'll show you mine, which can either be done flatter or it has another zipper around it where it comes up further to where you can fit more in it. Then I would invest in a good thermos. That's three things I would not take the cheap route on. A thermos is gonna cover some of your hot lunches if you don't have access to a microwave because y'all, they're not like, the thermoses they make today is not like the little hobby, hobby lobby, no. Yeah, was that her name? Holly Hobby, Ho Hobby Lobby. Oh, I got her crafts on the brain, Hobby Lobby, okay. Holly Hobby, I had one, the little lunch box and the little plastic thermos. It was insulated, but y'all, our stuff was cold before we even got to lunch. But the thermoses that they make today, y'all, stainless steel and insulated, they're a little better. There is a trick to putting hot lunches in those thermoses and them still staying hot, and I'll tell you that in the other half of this video. Other little containers that you want to buy, I'm not as picky about those. I get a lot of mine from Dollar Tree, y'all, but those three things I would spend the money on to, to make sure they're of good quality, okay? So let's get to Let's do the, let's just cover the sandwiches first, y'all, because that is those, one of the number one things that people put in their lunch boxes is sandwiches, but they don't have to be boring, okay? If you're going to do sandwiches, everybody's like, yeah, but if I, you can pre-make sandwiches. I'm just going to tell you this, you can pre-make sandwiches. Yes, you can. Everybody's like, no, you can't because the jelly will get soggy and it's just a big old mess. No, it ain't. Not if you do it right, it's not. And I'll tell you how. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Peanut butter and jelly. Y'all, all that song just popped in my brain. Okay. And then the, the, the mac and cheese is on the brain. Okay. <laughs> that just went in. That just, okay. I'm going to have that in my brain for the rest of the day. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches can be pre-made, and y'all, they can even be frozen. And then we'll go one step further. I'll tell you how to do the crustables, okay? If you got them kids that want those crustables that cost like $8 a box, okay? And you only get like five. No, we're not going there. Okay, pre-make your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Here's how you keep them from being soggy. You put just a thin little layer of peanut butter on both sides. This is your barrier to protect your bread. Then put your jelly in the middle on one side. Close it up. Pre-make a bunch of sandwiches. Put them like in a gallon Ziploc bag. Put them babies. Oh, you can in, you can individually wrap them in the little foldable plastic bags, and then or saran wrap, and then put them in a Ziploc bag. When it's time to make the lunch, yeah, they're frozen, but guess what? It's going to keep the rest of your lunch cold, and they're going to be thawed out by the time those kids eat lunch, I promise. Okay? So, it only takes like maybe an hour for them to thaw out. They're thawed out by lunchtime, y'all, and they're not soggy. Okay? Grab a sandwich, throw it in that lunchbox. If your kids are old enough to make their own lunches, some of these things can be put in lunch boxes at nighttime inside the lunch boxes and put the lunch box in the refrigerator, y'all. Your lunches are made. Teach your kids to start making their own lunches. And you're like, no, because they'll get more of this. They'll get all snack food and won't make anything good. No, you put some rules on it. You put some rules on it. I know a lady, y'all, that has a lunch station in her pantry and the sandwiches and stuff are in the freezer okay they'll get it and she writes on it one sandwich then over here she's got like little baskets and there'll be like chips in one snacks in another little treats in another whatever and she'll say like one bag of chips one snack Maybe two little treats. It may be like a little package of gummies or something, you know. Okay. Two fruits. 
You see where I'm going with this? Label them. Tell them how much of each. You keep up with the inventory and you'll see somebody got more than one bag of chips because they're all gone. Who did that? See, hold them accountable, but teach them, okay? They're learning how to pack their own lunches. That was free, by the way, okay? Set you up something. Put those sandwiches in the freezer. Pre-make them. Take a whole loaf of bread one day and make a bunch of sandwiches. Individually wrap them. Put them in the freezer. There you go. Makes lunchtime a whole lot easier. All right, lunch packing. All right, get a little basket. Y'all, you can get baskets at the Dollar Tree. Label it. One bag of chips. One snack, like Little Debbie's or something like that, you know, but not all the sugar, y'all, okay? I enc people encourage more fruits, okay? And just one bag of it because the fruits can possibly offset some of that other, okay? Label it however you want it and the quantity. And then teach your kids how to make their own school lunch, okay? If you don't want to do this at nighttime and keep it in the refrigerator, then get them up a little earlier in the mornings and after they get done getting their clothes on and they've had that breakfast, they now go fix your lunch. And then y'all, you can always peek in it before they go walk out the door or whatever to make sure they did it right, okay? Have rules, set rules, okay? Teach them how to make their own lunch. Um, the drinks, Y'all, a lot of schools are going to water bottles um, because a lot of the bottles and stuff that they may bring are the Capri Suns. The kids are getting messy with them. It's too much sugar. They're spilling it everywhere. That's the reason why a lot of schools are wanting the water bottles that you invest in because they don't spill it all over them. It doesn't break, stuff like that. And they're encouraging more water, okay? And something that's easier for the kids to open and not get it everywhere. Okay? Y'all, them Capri Suns and them Juicy Juices, they can go everywhere. That kid's going to squeeze it just right trying to get that straw in there. And they've got it over them and these other kids sitting beside them too. It was getting messy. I get it. I understand. Okay? Invest in a good water bottle. And some of these kids can't open. So, Y'all, I can barely get some of these things off. If I can't get it off, I have to hand it to my husband and say, here, open this for me. Can you imagine three, four, five-year-old trying to get some water bottles open and some stuff? Y'all, them little water bottles that's got that little button on it where it just, it pops open. That's so easy for preschoolers and kindergartners, y'all. Keep it easy for the little ones, okay? The older ones, they know how to open up water bottles, okay? Keep it simple for the younger ones and practice with them using it before they go to school so they will know how to do this. Okay, so you can pre-make sandwiches. There's a way to keep the peanut butter and jelly from getting soggy. Y'all, I wish I would have known that years ago. That never dawned on me. Okay, I learned it from that other woman. I like following her YouTube channel. Okay, um, oh, here's another one. Everybody's like, yeah, but the mustard and the ketchup and the mayonnaise. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, it ain't gonna get soggy. Y'all, get your bread. Put your meat down, okay? Put your meat down. If it's thin slice, y'all, put some on the other side. Okay, just separate it. Put some, now I don't know what you're going to do about bologna, but, you know, because you can't get the thin slice bologna or something and put two pieces on there. Put your condiment in between the meat. Your meat on the bread acts as the barrier. Now, if you want to put lettuce on it, okay. The lettuce is not going to make your sandwich soggy. If you want pickles and 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 tomatoes anything juicy you might better put those in an in a separate container they will make your sandwich juicy soggy because of the juice that's in them so put things like that in another little container and then just Fix your sandwich when you sit down to eat. Teach your little one. Okay, and when you get to school, take your tomato out, put it on your sandwich, open it up, put it on your sandwich, put your pickles on there, close it. 
okay? Teach them how to fix some of these things. Practice at home before you send these little ones to school eating some things, okay? See if they can do it. If you don't want your mayonnaise, lettuce, mustard, honey mustard, whatever, on your sandwich, there's little bitty bitty containers, y'all, that I showed y'all that you can put condiments in and make your sandwich when you sit down to eat. Easy peasy. If you're getting tired of sandwiches, have you thought about wraps? Tortilla wraps, y'all. There's spinach, there's whole wheat, there's tomato and basil, y'all. Them things are awesome. Make a sandwich wrap. This opens you up to so many different possibilities, y'all. You can do chicken wraps, like buffalo chicken wraps. You can do egg salad sandwich wraps. You can do um, tuna salad, chicken salad, okay? Those wetter ingredients will make a sandwich soggy, okay? But not tortillas, okay? It doesn't make your tortillas soggy. Have you thought about making a sandwich on bagels, English muffins? You can make a sandwich on anything, y'all. Jazz it up a little bit. Use Substitute something besides bread, okay? Uh, y'all, there are some people that will take breakfast for lunch and make a sandwich out of two waffles, eggs, and whatever kind of meat, like a slice of ham, bacon, or a, a little round piece of sausage, and we'll have a breakfast sandwich made with waffles. How awesome is that? And they'll take breakfast for lunch. I know some kids who like pancake uh, breakfast sandwiches, okay? Here's some more breakfast ideas. Make sandwiches out of waffles and pancakes, okay? Take those pancakes. Put the eggs and the sausage or the meat or whatever inside there and make a breakfast sausage out of pancakes or waffles and take that as your lunch, okay? Breakfast for lunch, just like you can have breakfast for supper, y'all. Okay, quesadillas. Yes, you can. You can do BLTs in cases, in um, wraps. Get creative and substitute for the bread and use tortillas. Use English muffins. Use um, uh, bagels. What is that? What is that other thing? Raisin bread, y'all. Some of that fancy bread. Um, uh, sub, sub, um, hoagie buns. You don't have to take the sesame seed buns, y'all hamburger buns. You don't have to do bread all the time. Change the bread to something else. Then get into wraps, okay? Chicken salad, tuna salad, egg salad pairs good with just some multigrain crackers, y'all. Put you some of that stuff in between some crackers and, and use crackers. Y'all, I, I don't know where they are. There is some crackers that uh, me and my husband likes. It's a multi-grain cracker and so crunchy, y'all. And it's got all the grains in it. You can choose healthy varieties, y'all. Okay? Uh, let's. Oh, y'all, on the waffle sandwiches or the pancake sandwiches, you can do, like, some of these kids like the Nutella, y'all. I know that is kind of sweet. Uh, Mike can do that at home. Y'all, you can make a sandwich with waffles and, and pancakes and put the Nutella in the middle and maybe put slices of banana or apple on there and make a fruit Nutella breakfast sandwich and take that for lunch, y'all. It see doesn't have to be boring. All right, let's see. Um, 
there's other ways you can make like a little sandwich. Have you seen like the panini presses? The little sandwich makers, y'all, that you can put your bread, then put your filling or whatever you've got in it. Then it, it, it you close it down and it makes a sandwich, but it's toasted. Try a toasted sandwich, okay? Like the little panini press, the little, um, the sandwich maker. Um, what else? Y'all, you can make sandwiches out of shuffles. Do y'all know what shuffles are? Look it up, okay? There's like a Wonder Bread shuffle that is supposed to taste just like a piece, like a Wonder Bread piece of bread, okay? But it's a shuffle, all right? And use that as your bread. Um, a lot of people who are into keto and diabetics are using the shuffles to substitute for the bread that can't have the carbs, okay? And you can put anything on those. Y'all, you can use canned biscuits and make little pie things, hot pockets, stuff like that. Put your own filling in them. Y'all, a lot of the things that I make with the canned biscuits, I've told y'all you can take those and make them for lunch. The little mini pizzas, okay? There are so many ways. Y'all, you can substitute, you can use hot dog buns. You can use hoagie buns. This is to substitute for sandwich, substitutes for sandwiches, y'all, if you don't want to use regular bread. Hot dog buns, hamburger buns, pretzel buns, bagels the rolls and make you some sliders y'all those little rolls those little hawaiian rolls are perfect to make the right size little sandwiches for little preschool and kindergarten hands and make those sliders okay small size sandwiches for them y'all they may not can handle a big old sandwich downsize it for little ones the rolls english muffins waffles pancakes biscuits pie dough Y'all, you can make those little hot pockets and stuff like that with pie dough. Tortilla wraps, quesadillas, all right? Different kind of bread, uh, non bread, French bread, hoagies, croissants, flat bread, pita bread, crescent rolls. I can't read my own writing yet. I don't know what my thought was here. I jotted down something, and I, but I don't know where I was going with that, with, with my notes. I don't know what I was talking about. I do that sometimes, y'all. You can substitute bread for something else and jazz up your sandwich. The little pita pockets. You can stuff the stuffing or the uh, lettuce and the, the meat and stuff inside the pita pockets, y'all. The flatbread. Croissants. For sandwiches, crescent rolls, whatever. You cut them in half and use those as sandwich bread, y'all. See? Jazz it up. You don't have to use just plain old bread anymore, okay? You can use different things to put on your bread, y'all, like Nutella. Um, some kind of spread, okay? Um... Let's see, y'all. There's jelly, peanut butter, and honey. There's peanut butter and honey, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and um, um, Nutella. Y'all, I love mashing up peanut butter and banana, peanut butter and banana sandwich, peanut butter and I mean uh, mayonnaise and banana sandwich. Y'all, you can use a spread cream cheese and put something in your cream cheese like onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper, everything bagel seasoning. Put something in your cream cheese and make a spread and spread it on a tortilla and make a wrap, y'all. You can take a tortilla, pinwheels, pinwheels. You can take the, the cream cheese spread, okay? And you can season it. And then put your sandwich meat or your lettuce or whatever uh, and roll it up. Cut it into pinwheels. Put that in your sandwich. Oh, that's good for little preschool hands, y'all. Pick up them little pinwheels. 
Easy peasy, okay? I know I, I, I like to make one with the cream cheese spread, some sandwich meat, and substitute spinach instead of lettuce, okay? And pickle, something to dress it up with. Uh, let's say egg salad, tuna salad, chicken salad, pimento and cheese. Pimento and cheese will work on any of that kind of bread or wraps. Um, then you've got your sandwich meat, bologna, salami, pepperoni, roast beef, pickle loaf, a turkey ham. Um, what's that other one? Ham and cheese loaf, y'all. It don't have to be just bologna sandwiches and peanut butter and sand peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Try some different meats, okay? You can make the little wraps with some salami and pepperoni, okay? Y'all, then we can get into homemade Lunchables. I love homemade Lunchables for kids. You get some crackers. You get some sandwich meat. And kind of like cut it down small for them, okay? Ram, get you a little cookie cutter, okay? And then the cheese, okay? Teach them how to make their little homemade Lunchables. Send the crackers. Send the meat, okay, cut it up, cut the cheese up for them. You can do it in squares, y'all. It don't have to be round, okay? You can put a square piece of cheese and a square piece of meat on a round cracker. I don't care. Make a homemade Lunchable, okay? Y'all, you can go get a box of crackers, some sandwich meat, a package of cheese, and you can probably make about, for the cost of that, you can probably get up to 20 to maybe 25 Lunchables out of buying those things and making them stretch rather than going and buying those little beady Lunchables that you don't get much in it, maybe four crackers, okay, to make two little things, okay, cheese and crackers. And how much are those things? About $5 a piece? Mm -mm. No, girl. No, girl. You can make your own homemade Lunchables. Okay? Then, if you're doing Lunchables for little kids, y'all, you can stock up on some crackers and stuff. Those things will stretch forever. Switch the meats and cheeses out. Then you can go and get a bag of chips and... Put just some little chips in a, in a little section of the Lunchable. Then maybe a couple of little cookies and like some little gummies or some little M&Ms or some little trail mix, yogurt bites. Make that little homemade Lunchable, y'all. Buy the bigger item, section it out into little Lunchables. I promise you will save money and your kids will probably get more to eat than paying $5 for just a few little things. Keep it small for the little ones. So there's homemade Lunchables. There's different kind of breads for sandwiches, spreads to go on your sandwiches, or different kind of lunch meats, and then get into wraps, or the peony breads, whatever, and then homemade Lunchables. Y'all, grilled cheese. Have you thought about taking a BLT or a grilled cheese? I said a Hot Pocket. Y'all, you can make your own homemade Hot Pockets. You can make Hot Pockets out of canned biscuits. I showed y'all how in the video. I made some little some little Hot Pockets or Epanadas, y'all. You can take those. You can stuff them with anything you want to inside. Salami, pepperoni, some cheese. You've got an Epanada or a little Hot Pocket to throw in your lunchbox. Make a bunch of them up. Put them in a Ziploc bag. Put them in the freezer. Grab your lunch, okay? Um, have you ever heard of the fruit tacos? You take your taco or some kind of bread, tortilla, and then you put like peanut butter or a cream cheese, a sweetened cream cheese. Then you put fruit in it, like slices of apple, slices of banana, and then slice your strawberries, okay? Roll that up. I, 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 you would just have to see it to know what I'm talking about. Ow! Uh, grilled cheese. Uh, rainbow grilled cheese. We made some one time. And if I get the chance, y'all, again, we're going to do it. Rainbow grilled cheese. Rainbow grilled cheese. 
Oh, it just gave me an idea of something to do, y'all. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Y'all, you can even, like if you're doing a kid's Lunchable, you can even cube up like preschoolers, y'all. Little tiny hands. Keep it simple for them. You can take slices of bread, cube it up, toast it, and then cut up little squares, little cubes of mozzarella, okay? Or you can get the mozzarella sticks, okay? And cut them up into little round slices, okay? Then get like a little container of maybe some marinara sauce, okay? And they can dip like the little cubes into the marinara sauce or the little mozzarella, y'all. Teeny tiny fingers, teeny tiny items. Cut it up for them, make it smaller, okay? Uh, let's see. That's different kind of sandwiches. Switch out your breads, different kind of spreads, different things you can use, like the shuffles, okay? Hot pockets, empanadas, y'all, canned biscuits. Make a sandwich out of a canned biscuit, okay? Take breakfast for lunch, okay? Um, there's this one little girl that loves to like put her sausage patty in between her two little, oh y'all, the miniature mini pancakes. You can get them in the freezer section at Walmart, y'all. The mini little pancakes, preschoolers and kindergarten. And then you can get like some little sausage or pepperoni or something like that to go inside the little mini pancakes and make a little sandwich out of them, y'all. Or let them take the little mini pancakes for lunch, okay? You just give them like maybe like five little pancake rounds and put like some um, uh, syrup inside a little container and let them just dip it in there, y'all. You don't have to serve a big old stack of pancakes for breakfast with a fork and a knife and stuff and drizzle pancake syrup all on top. You can get the little ones for little hands, put them in their lunch box and let them dip in the sauce, y'all, in the in the uh, pancake syrup. There you go. Give them a little side of sausage or the little sticks of sausage, okay? Breakfast for lunch. There you go. All right, let's see. That's about covered sandwiches. Breakfast for lunch. Here we go. Oh, y'all know something else. Take a day and make some of those little mini corn muffins. Uh, you take the cornmeal mix, you put it in the mini muffin tins, if you've got one, not the big one. You, these are kind of like bite size for little ones or for teenagers, whatever. And there, I'll tell you why you're going to downsize in a minute because these are some things you can keep warm and I'll tell you how. Okay, downsize them, do the mini muffin tins, make the little mini cornmeal muffins, put that little... Take some hot dogs and cut them up into little little uh, rounds. Stuff it down inside the cornmeal mix and then bake them. You got those little mini corn hot dog muffins, okay? That's packable for lunches, y'all. Those things are even good room temperature or warm. They don't have to be heated up. That's something different, okay? Grilled cheese, uh, pizza quesadillas, y'all. <laughs> pizza quesadillas. Take your tortilla, put your marinara sauce on it, put your salami or your pepperoni, then your, your cheese. You can roll it up and make a wrap or make a pinwheel. Y'all cut them up into pinwheels. Pizza quesadillas, or you can like fold it in half, toast it, make your quesadilla, then cut it into triangles. Put that in your lunch box. See, so many ways you can make pizzas to take for lunch. You're welcome, okay? The canned biscuits, the mini pizzas I showed y'all. You can take those for lunch, okay? If there's something that you want to keep warm, I think we're fixing to get to it. Y'all, you can take breakfast for lunch. Waffles, pancakes, biscuits, bacon, sausage patties, links, hash brown patties, tater tots. 
breakfast burrito, uh, breakfast quesadillas. Slap anything in them burritos and quesadillas that you want. Wrap them babies up, take them for lunch. French toast sticks. You know all that, you know how like your kids don't like the ends of the bread when you make their sandwiches? You know what you can do with all those ends? Turn them into French toast sticks. The ends crunch up really good and make good sticks. When you turn them into French toast sticks, you know, you dip them in the egg, egg, and then you put them in a skillet and fry them. Y'all, the, the ends will stand up firmer and they'll make good crunchy little sticks. Send them with like some little container of pancake syrup, French toast sticks for lunch. Um, Y'all, some kids like to eat cereal for lunch. Put them, a, put them a container with some good healthy cereal, y'all. And then in, a, in another bottle or something or a water bottle or another container, they do have some juice box juice box things, um, the milk cartons, you can get another water bottle to put milk in, okay? You can, all right? Um, you can put, you can make up some little pies, like little fried pie things using the pie dough. Y'all, you can get it in the, where the canned biscuits are, get you some pie dough. Make up some homemade pop tarts. Did you know you can use pie dough to make homemade pop tarts? Yes, you can. Slap that sheet out. Put whatever spread you want in between, okay? There's all kinds of spreads that you can make Pop-Tarts out of, okay? Put your spread in there. Cut them into squares. Get you a fork. Crimp them shut. Then bake them. You got homemade Pop-Tarts. You can take some of those for lunch. You can turn those into hot pockets and put um, pizza fixings in there, um, sandwich meats in there, like a hot pocket sandwich, um, buffalo chicken. Y'all, you can take shredded chicken, buffalo sauce, stuff it in there, and make a hot pocket. See? Don't have to be sandwiches anymore, all right? Um... Little homemade Pop-Tarts, okay? Uh, egg bites. I make egg bites for my husband for breakfast, but y'all, if he wanted to save some and eat them for lunch, he could eat them for lunch. To eat, do some egg bites. I have videos on making them in the oven, making them in, and you can put anything in egg bites that you want. You can make them breakfasty, or you can make them lunchy by putting some vegetables in the egg bites, okay? Like some broccoli. Chop it up really good, y'all, okay? Chop it up. Spinach, kale, uh, shredded vegetables like I sneak uh, squash and zucchini in some of our egg bites for them granddaughters and they don't know what hit them, okay? And then shuffles. That's how I make our breakfast shuffles. You can make shuffles for lunch, y'all. Shuffles are egg and cheese. Then you can put some stuff in them that you want. I sneak in squash and zucchini. You can sneak in broccoli. You can sneak in spinach. They won't know it, y'all. They're getting protein, they're getting a dairy, and they're getting a vegetable all in a shuffle. Okay, now, oh, y'all, we went, oh, no, we still got another second. <laughs> Thing to go. Okay, this may be a little longer than what I thought it was. We may have to do this into a series, okay? This part be the ideas for the lunches. Then I may have to do a part two video and do the essentials. We'll see. I, I'm either going to combine them together and have one long video or this will be two separate videos. I'll just see, okay? So we've covered different kind of sandwiches, different substitutions that you can make for sandwiches, wraps, Hot Pockets, Pop-Tarts, uh, Epanadas, the little corn muffin bags. Make muffins, okay? You can do muffins and put things in them. Um, you can put vegetables in muffins. Uh, um, zucchini muffins, zucchini bread. You got your vegetable, y'all, along with, you know, okay. So, that is that. Okay, now, if you want to keep some of these hot, which we're fixing to get into a main course of hot lunches, 
I'm just gonna tell you all these and tell you how to keep them hot. Chicken curry and rice. Y'all, you can make some, you can take leftovers in a thermos, okay, or in a container. If you have access to a microwave, put them in a container. If you don't have access to a microwave, use your thermos, okay? Chicken curry and rice. Uh, bratwursts, hot dogs. Um, you can roll them up in tortillas and top with cheese. You can bake them like that, or you can just wrap them up. Instead of putting them in a hot dog bun, take them and wrap them up in a, get maybe like the jumbo hot dogs, wrap them up with slice of cheese and the, the condiment, and roll up in a tortilla. Cut them in those pinwheels again. Put them down inside your thermos. Or if you do the smaller tortillas and the smaller hot dogs, you can roll them up. And I think they will be tall enough, they will be short enough if you roll them up tubular long ways. You can fit about three or four inside your thermos when you roll them up. Okay, did y'all think about that? Instead of just a freaking hot dog on a bullet, did you think about that? I didn't. That's why I wrote them down. Okay. Uh, cocktail weenies. Y'all, all them things that we eat at these appetizers, these parties, cocktail weenies, y'all. You can put them down inside your thermos. Okay. Um, mac and cheese. Y'all, you can throw anything in your mac and cheese. You can throw some meat in your mac and cheese. You can make buffalo chicken mac and cheese. You can make, you can throw some, um, Chunks of ham in there. Ham and macaroni and cheese. <clears throat> uh, what's another one? Uh, spam. Spam and mac and cheese. Okay, cook up you some spam or just chop it up, put it in there. Hold on. Oh, y'all. <clears throat> you can make a, a broccoli and cheese mac and cheese. <gasps> broccoli, chicken, and mac and cheese. Dump that in your thermos, okay? <clears throat> Y'all, you can make the little mini pizzas. If you make them small enough, you know like the little bagel bites that you buy in the store? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, them little bagel bites that, <sighs> and you only get so many in a box. You can make mini pizzas with like some smallish, you can take a big tortilla, take you a cookie cutter, a little circle cookie cutter, cut out some circles out of your tortillas. You can take canned biscuits, y'all, and make them even smaller and get a smaller cookie cutter and cut out, okay, a smaller pizza. You can get meany meany, okay? You can get even smaller by taking a cookie cutter and cutting a biscuit down. Y'all know my secret, those flaky layer biscuits. Pull them apart, get two of them to make it flatter, okay? And then take your pizza cut, uh, take your cookie cutter, make them even smaller to go down inside that thermos, okay? Put you some little mini pizzas in there. Um, or the little non bread, y'all, you can cut the non bread into little circles. Okay, using a simple cutty, cookie, cutty, cutty, <laughs> cookie cutter, okay? Um, bread slices, y'all. Did y'all know you can make pizzas out of bread? Yes, you can. You can make pizzas out of bread. You tote like the, like, you can use the French loaf, depending on how thick you want it, or you can just use bread, y'all, and toast it. Put you some marinara, well, Put you, take your bread, put it on a cookie sheet or in the air fryer, parchment paper, whatever. Oh, y'all, I got to turn the heat down. Um, and then uh, put your marinara sauce on. Put your uh, um, uh, pepperoni. You can get the little mini pepperonis, y'all, even smaller. Then your cheese. Toast them up in the oven or toast them up in the air fryer. And you've got like pizzas, but you're using bread, okay? Now, if you want them smaller to go inside a thermos, downsize, cut them smaller and buy the miniature versions, okay? Uh, oh my gosh, let's see. Um, 
pizza muffins. Have y'all thought of pizza muffins? I, I, um, pull apart bread, pizza pull apart bread, pizza muffins, okay? You take, um, you can actually choose a muffin mix. No flavor, no flavor, just a plain muffin mix. You can make your own muffin mix. You can either make a sweet muffin, dessert muffin, breakfast muffin, or you can make different muffins. Take it on the bread level and do something different with it. Throw in some, some um, chunks of cheese and some um, pepperoni or salami, stuff like that. Sausage, okay? Put it in your dough. Put it in your batter, your muffin batter. Put it in there. Make your muffin, okay? Then, y'all, you can dip that in a container of marinara sauce. You have pizza muffins. You're welcome. See? Told y'all I had some ideas. Okay, let's see. Um, you can pack taco meat inside thermos and then take your sides, like your tortillas, then your lettuce and your tomatoes and your cheese. Put them in little compartments and then assemble your tacos or your tortillas when you get to work, okay? If you've got teenagers, your, your teenagers can do this, okay? Put some taco meat or chicken fajitas, steak fajitas inside their thermos, okay? And put them some taco shells in there, tostados, uh, the pita bread, the naan bread, whatever to make a taco, burrito, or a wrap, okay? Fajita, whatever they want, put it in their lunchbox. All right, um, y'all, you can make your own taco salads. You can take your taco meat, get you a bag of chips, okay? Then make a taco salad, okay? Ravioli for little ones. There's another thing, y'all, that I'm gonna show you in the second half of the video. I'm not gonna show you, but I'm gonna tell you about, check into Omni boxes. Omni or Omni. I wanna get a couple of them. It's a smaller lunch box, but in the little section right here, and I, I'll tell you it in the other video, it's it's a little it's a like a bent bent bento box, but in this little section right here, it has a removable just a little one cup thermos, and the little lid screws off. You can put inside that little thermos what you want. Screw the lid back on, and then you've got your other sections of the lunch box. Nothing intermingles with the other. And if you don't want the thermos in there, you take it out, and then you've got your regular bit bento box, okay? And your different sections, okay? Look them up. I don't have them yet, but I'm thinking about getting some, okay? All right, this will help for the hot lunches. Something hot, and then their sides and stuff, okay? We'll get to those in a minute. Pasta noodles with pesto. Pasta noodles with any kind of sauce. Did y'all know you can make a sauce out of other vegetables besides tomatoes? Have you ever heard of butternut squash, mac and cheese? Pumpkin, mac and cheese? Zucchini, mac and cheese? Look it up on Pinterest. I'm gonna start trying some. ABCs, one, two, threes, SpaghettiOs. Um, Y'all, you can, you can send hamburgers to school with your kids. Um, meat and veggie patties, veggie burgers. If they don't like meat, y'all, if you've got some teenagers that are vegetarians, they can't handle meat. Okay, veggie burgers, okay? Veggie nuggets, uh, chicky nuggets, quiches. Make up some quiches and then put in a container, y'all. You can put anything in a quiche, okay? Egg muffins, nachos. Uh, ramen noodles, y'all, for these kids. They love them ramen noodles, and they're easy, y'all. And you can beef up ramen noodles. You can put a meat in it. You can put a vegetable in it. Make them a little healthier. And I, a lot of people are concerned about the ramen noodles, y'all, because of, like, something about the rubber consistency or something, the preservative that they use for those noodles, and they're concerned about that, getting into the ramen. Let me tell you how to do that. Take your noodles, soak them in some water, at least for 30 minutes. 
then drain those noodles, rinse them off, get all that starchiness and that rubbery whatever they say that comes out in the ramen noodles in the water, okay? Rinse all that crap out, okay? And then get fresh water and then boil your noodles. All right, let's see, rice. Y'all can beef up rice. You can put anything in rice. You can make broccoli and cheddar rice. You can make chicken and rice. You can make steak and rice. You can make Spanish rice. You can make, y'all, come on, hamburger me with some rice and some salsa and some cheese and some Rotel tomatoes and stuff. Make a meal out of it with some rice. Or you can, if they just like rice, fried rice, y'all. Uh, spaghetti, any kind of pasta noodles will do, okay? Pigs in a blanket. Did y'all think about taking them for lunch? Pigs in a blanket. There you go, you're welcome. Uh, bacon wrapped weenies. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, my mind just went in a totally different direction. <laughs> Hot dogs, or the little the little cocktail weenies, y'all. Wrap them in bacon. You can take those for lunch, okay? Uh, fish sticks for kids. Uh, French fries, y'all. Yes, you can do French fries. These are gonna be hot lunches now. I haven't got to the part about telling you how to keep them warm, okay? Fish sticks, French fries, um, veggie fries, okay? Soup. I wouldn't send soup with a little bitty kid, okay? Unless they've practiced at home and they know how to eat soup from a bowl, okay? Some of these lunches are gonna be for little ones and you can downsize and make them for little hands or they may not be for little ones in a school setting where they don't have mom and dad's help. And they may be for older kids that can handle these away from the home setting, okay? Unassisted. Okay, uh, soup, all right, that's hot lunches. All right, you've got your pastas like um, ma um, macaroni noodles, rotini noodles with veggies, uh, cheese and dressing. Y'all, you can take a cold pasta salad, okay? There's cold pasta salads with the rotini noodles, the tricolor rotini noodles, macaroni noodles, you know, like the egg and uh, um, pea and... Um, macaroni, little cold pasta salad. There's a my Italian pasta salad I love to make, y'all. I love to eat that because you get the pasta, you get the meat, you get the dairy, you get the dressing, you get the vegetables all in one container. And you've got a complete meal right there, okay? Now, for the hot lunches, y'all, in your thermos, this is a way that you keep your hot lunches hot and they won't get cold. Take your thermos, and I think I explain it in the in the second half of this video, but we'll do it again just in case I forget. Okay, take your thermos, open it up, pour boiling hot water. You can either heat up water from in the microwave, but you make sure you get it hot, 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 or boil some water in a kettle on the stove. Boiling hot water, pour it inside your thermos first. Put the lid on. Let it sit for at least 10 minutes. This heats up and activates the insulation on the inside of a stainless steel thermos, okay? This heats it all up, gets it prepared, okay? Trust me, okay? Then, right before you put your hot food in it, dump out the hot water, and then quickly put your hot food in there, get that lid on there. Screw it on tight, make sure it don't leak or anything like that, and then put it in the lunchbox. Y'all, this will keep hot lunches hot before and all the way up until these teenagers get to eat lunch, okay? That's the reason why for the new thermoses made of stainless steel now, okay? The insulated stainless steel, okay? That's that's the purpose. That's why they upgraded, you know? They could have done that back in my day. And then I wanted them hot school lunches, but that soup was cold by the time I got to lunch and sat down to eat it. They could have done that for us, okay? Now, if you want to put something in it like um, uh, the little corn dog muffins, the little bagels, I mean the little uh, bagel bites or pizza bites, um, hot pockets or, or the little um, 
anything, y'all. Um, chicken nuggets, french fries, fish sticks. Y'all, you could put chicken nuggets and french fries in the same thermos, okay? Now, you still want to, you still want to heat it up to keep these hot, but things that are dry, you don't want them getting soggy on the inside due to the condensation that's going to be inside the thermos. Paper towel. <clears throat> Before you put your chicken nuggets or your french fries or your fish sticks or the little pigs in a blanket or something that you don't want to get soggy, your dry stuff, okay, put a paper towel down in the bottom. Right after you dump that water out, dry it out real quick with a dry paper towel, Throw the paper towel away, get a clean paper towel, fold it up, put it down in the bottom. Then put your chicken nuggets, fish sticks, french fries, corn dog muffins, whatever, pigs in a blanket, something bready or battered, okay? Then put it down in there, okay? When you close that lid and that heat in there will create condensation, but you don't want your chicken nuggets and stuff like that, any kind of bread or anything, to get soggy from the condensation. The paper towel will soak up the condensation, okay? And will help keep your stuff from getting soggy. That's it, y'all. That's how you keep a thermos hot. All right, now, let's go into, these are gonna be quick, y'all. Ideas for, Instead of sending all like the little sweet snacky stuff, like all the little Debbie stuff, y'all, those are okay occasionally for just like a little treat, but y'all get more vegetables and fruits in your kids, okay, instead of all the sugary sweets at school. If you want to do the sugary sweets, wait till they get home from school and let them have a little, a little snack or a treat to tide them over until you get supper cooked. Save it for then, okay? That way if they get a, they come down from that sugar rush, they can go sit down for a minute until the crankiness subsides and then they can sit down and eat a good meal, okay? They're not taking it out on their teacher, okay? Try to get more nutritious stuff packed in their lunchbox. Then maybe save the treats and stuff because, you know, you'll you'll be the hero when they get home and then they get to have that little sweet treat. Mom gave me a sweet treat. Okay, you get to be the hero, okay? All right, let's see. These are just going to be quick, y'all. So let's do like, let's start with fruit because this page is small. Fruit, okay? Bananas. You don't just have to stick a whole banana in their lunchbox and expect them, especially a preschooler, to have to peel it at school. Y'all, you can go ahead and peel it for your little ones or your grown-up ones, middle school, whatever. You can throw a whole banana in their lunchbox. But for the little ones, slice it up, y'all, okay? And then put it in a little something where little tiny hands, okay? Tiny fingers, tiny mouths, tiny bites, tiny sizes, okay? Uh, strawberries, y'all. If you send grapes and stuff and blueberries and stuff like that to school with the little ones, you might want to cut them up for choking hazards, okay? So let me say that, okay? Their teacher may freak out if a grape gets hung in their throat, okay? Cut this, cut some of these things up for the little kids. But the older ones, y'all, if they can handle them, by all means, just put them in a container. Now, if they're going to be juicy, you're going to have to put them in a separate container, okay? So it doesn't leach into their other stuff. Bento boxes and, and stuff like that are good because when you close the lid, they have like that seal around each one of the sections that's going to keep things from leaking into other sections in the lunchbox, okay? So let's say banana, strawberries, blueberries, mango, pineapple, fruit cocktail, oranges, pears, apples with peanut butter, or apples with caramel, or apple with Nutella, apple with something that they like to dip it in, cantaloupe, watermelon, peaches, grapes, raspberries, kiwi, melons, dried fruit, y'all, dried craisins, raisins, uh, prunes, um, now, y'all, prunes ain't nothing but dried plums, okay? Uh, dates, raisins. Um, <laughs> I gotta put these back on, y'all. Put some fruit in your kids' lunches, okay? Make it more nutritious. Your sauces and dips will need to go in a different container, y'all. There's salsa, picante sauce, hummus, ranch, whipped cream, and a yogurt mix dip, okay? You can turn a yogurt into a dip, 
okay? Mixing a little whipped cream in it, y'all. And then fruit dip, okay? Peanut butter, ketchup, cheese dip. Put them in containers, okay? So we got that covered. All right, now, veggies. All right, y'all, put some veggies in your kids' lunch. Practice with them trying some different foods at home before you spend this money putting them in a lunch box and then they just throw them in the trash. Or you get home and they have it. Hey, I didn't like that. Practice with some things at home first. Make sure they like it before you put it in. Start doing this during the summer months, y'all. Practice and letting them open packages, open their lunch boxes and stuff. Practice with different foods to see what they like, what they don't like before you go buy Spend money, put it in their lunchbox, and they don't eat it, okay? Veggies. Y'all, cut the vegetables up where they fit in the lunchbox better. It's a no-brainer. Cucumber. Oh, I can see. Cucumbers. Broccoli. Some kids like, y'all like to take broccoli and dip it in ranch. Raw broccoli. Cauliflower. Dip it in ranch. Carrots. Peppers. My granddaughters, y'all love to dip carrots in ranch and peppers in ranch. You can get those little miniature peppers, okay? Uh, snap peas, edamame, celery, boiled eggs, y'all, is a good, excellent source of protein, okay? Cauliflower, zucchini, squash. My granddaughters like to take zucchini and dip raw zucchini sticks and dip it in, in, in ranch, y'all. These are excellent sources to get in your kids at lunchtime. Uh, radishes, cherry tomatoes, corn. Y'all, corn. You don't have to have a spoon to eat at preschoolers. Tiny portions, whole kernel corn, y'all. Peas, the little green peas, preschoolers. Okay, green beans, pickles. Oh my gosh, pickles. Uh, avocados. Okay, you can make avocado toast. You can make you can make an avocado spread to go on the tortillas that can go in your spreads. Or if they just like the avocado, y'all, so I don't slice it up. They got avocados to eat. Snacks, veggie straws, and some other shapes. Goldfish, chips. These might these will be things like you might want to get one of or put just a smaller portion. Go heavy on the main course. Go heavy on the fruits and vegetables. Snacks, back off a little, okay? Uh, cheese puffs, granola bars, protein bars are excellent. Pretzel sticks, y'all, you can even, you can even, they can dip the pretzel sticks in peanut butter or some kind of spread. If they don't like them plain, put it in a spread. They can dip it. Muffins. You can make any kind of muffin. Blueberry muffins, zucchini muffins, strawberry cheesecake muffins. That sounds good. Um, any kind of muffins. Applesauce, popcorn, peanuts, crackers, vanilla wafers, peanut butter and crackers, rice cakes. You can put peanut butter or Nutella on rice cakes, y'all. It's easily packable, y'all. Trail mix. Puddings, mini donuts. Y'all can make a healthy version of mini donuts because I've done it. I made some pumpkin donuts, and then we made a cream cheese frosting. We dipped them pumpkin donuts on there, or we spreaded it on top. <gasps> it was good. Um, graham crackers, uh, walking banana pudding. Research it, Pinterest it. Pirate booty, that little popcorn puffy stuff that's not sugary and it's not empty calories. Cheez Its, uh, Teddy Graham cookies, little Debbie's, but you know, okay. Mini muffins, y'all. Treats. Did I just spit all over my camera? I'm so sorry. Okay, treats. If you want to put some in there, some cookies, but just maybe two cookies, y'all, okay. Teddy Grahams, I covered them over there too. Animal crackers, y'all. Little Debbies, but the little small ones. Okay. Treats and snacks, unless they're healthy snacks like trail mix and granola bars. Okay, the little Debbies, just something small, y'all. Um, cupcakes, make them healthy. 
<laughs> Who am I kidding? Um, Rice Krispie treats, y'all. Uh, fruit roll-ups. M&M's. Gummies. Some brownies. Skittles. Candy bars, cereal. Sometimes in the bento boxes, there's like that little round circle in the middle. You can use those to put like one of these little treats in. Skittles, M&M's, uh, yogurt bites, gummies, something like that, Teddy Grahams. Or that may be a section where you want to put your sauces like ranch, peanut butter for dipping, something like that. Um, Y'all, that's all my ideas. Lunches do not have to be boring. Get you a main course. Some, If you're going to go the sandwich route, just jazz up your sandwiches. Make different kinds of sandwiches by using different breads. Um, tour, make up, turn them into wraps. Um, uh, hot pockets, empanadas, okay? Those you can put in the thermoses and keep warm if you want to keep them warm. Uh, different kinds of meats, roast beef, turkey, ham, salami, pickle loaf, all that stuff, y'all. Um, my gosh, you could make your own sub sandwich and take it to work versus a six inch subway, sub, that I, sub sandwich from somewhere. Y'all, you can make your own sub sandwich, okay? Jazz up your things. Uh, egg salad sandwiches, uh, tuna salad, chicken salad, buffalo chicken, okay, the shredded chicken. Um, Y'all, some uh, sandwiches doesn't have to be boring. Switch it up a little bit. Then if you want some things like Hot Pockets, the little corn muffins, pigs in a blanket, um, Go that route, okay? Something bready, but a meat kind of. Uh, or you can just do like uh, the pop tarts, the empanadas, the little taco cups I've made with canned biscuits. Any of those things I've made with canned biscuits would be good to pack in a lunch. The mini pizzas. You can make pizzas using tortillas. Cut them up, downsize them, okay? Or you can do roll-ups and make the little pinwheels. See, y'all, jazz up your lunch, okay? Then if you want to get into the hot stuff, put it in your thermos. I just gave you some different ideas that you can take to lunch. Y'all, you can take salads to lunch. Um, you can get your containers. Uh, make your salads. Y'all, you can do the salads in the jars, okay? Then when you get to work, you shake up your jar, okay? You turn it upside down. Start with your wet on the bottom, okay? This is like salad in a jar. Put your, put your dressing in the bottom. Then start putting your fixings, okay? Then your lettuce is going to be the last thing. When you get ready to assemble your salad, you're going to either shake it up and then eat your salad out of the jar or you, you take it, you dump it out in a bowl or a container. Your lettuce goes down first, then your fixings, then your dressings on top. You just reversed it and you dumped it out and there's your salad. You can still take your salad to work, okay? Take your leftovers to work, okay? If you're dealing with children, preschool, kindergarten, smaller sizes for smaller hands, smaller mouths, okay? Cut their things up for them. As they, as they get older, you can start using different things, things that you can trust them with to eat with no assistance at school, like the soups and stuff, okay? Um... Teenagers, okay? They can make some of their own stuff, y'all. Pre-make those sandwiches. Put them in the freezer. Take a day and batch cook some, some lunch stuff like the pigs in the blanket and the little taco cups, the little sloppy joe cups. Anything that I've done that I tell you that makes good lunches. The little mini pizzas, pigs in a blanket, the little corn muffins. Pre-make some stuff. Then put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. When it's time to make your school lunches, just get some out. You can pre-make your lunch boxes at night. Go ahead and put them in your lunch box. Unless it's something that just has to be done at the last minute. Whatever you can do at night, do the night before. And go ahead and get half of your lunch making done at night. Make your morning time go easier. Substitute breakfast stuff and eat it for lunch. Um, gosh, I just gave you so many ideas. 
more of the main course, more of the fruits and vegetables, less of the snacks and the treats, make it more nutritious for your kids, uh, invest in a good water bottle. Um, if you do take like Kool-Aid or something like that, just use a sugar substitute that's healthier, okay, to where they're not getting that sugar crash. Um, let's see, y'all, that's all the ideas that I have. Okay, the chicken nuggets, the french fries, just know how to put them in that thermos to keep them from getting soggy. There you go. Lunch does not have to be boring, y'all. I'm going to tell you a lady's channel that you can watch her make a lot of these lunches, okay? And see how she packs her school lunch, school lunches for her kids. Now she has one from toddler, well, she started out make she has some toddler meals on there, preschool meals, all the way up to her older kids, okay? Like when their kids got out of that, that stage, you know, and they wanted more grown up food to take for lunch. Y'all, she shows you how to, a lot of things to fix for lunches, cute little ways to fix them. You don't have to do them like she does, y'all. You don't have to go out here and buy all the equipment. Oh, Crustables. Here you go. I just thought of Crustables. The peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You don't have to buy the Crustables, y'all, in the packages. You don't have to go buy that little thing that makes the Crustables, the little two-piece thing. You can if you want to. I'll put it in my Amazon store if you want to. But, y'all, you can take a Mason wide mouth jar ring not the flat lid but the ring push it down on there cut that sandwich twist it or you can use a big biscuit cutter whatever okay then take you a fork and just kind of wet your fork a little bit and smoosh y'all do them edges all the way around press down and make those little Find light crimped edges around that homemade crustable. You'll thank me later, okay? At the end of the second video, or maybe this one, I'm going to show a slideshow of some Lunchables, some things that you can make for lunches, some pictures to give you some ideas. The homemade crustable pictures are going to be on there. Either at the end of this one or the end of the second video. I will give you some pictures of some homemade lunches. Okay? And if you need to pause it, look at it and say, Oh, I can do that lunchable right there. Oh, that's a good idea right there. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some shots, okay? And then I'm going to squeeze in some, some make-ahead breakfast ideas if they want to take breakfast for lunch and an easy way to make them, okay? I'm going to squeeze in some of those. Um, I love to make my own little chocolate chip mini muffins, y'all. I put them in my granddaughter's lunches and they get to school. And they think about me when they eat them. I make a healthier version, y'all, because I mix a little wheat flour in with the all-purpose flour and give a healthier version. Y'all, if you can get some protein in your kids, that makes them feel fuller and it will like protein will help them survive survive those long hours they got to go in between meals protein packed okay to where it will make them fuller longer and they don't get as hungry okay that's why i like to make a lot of homemade stuff for breakfasts and lunches even my little chocolate chip mini muffins are nutritious okay because i don't get the really sweet chocolate chips i get the semi sweet where the sugar's cut down a lot and get the little miniature ones I substitute and do half and half, and I get the whole wheat flour, okay? I make a healthier version. Put them in their lunches. You can make your own little muffins and stuff like that, okay, to send as a snack. But you know it's homemade, <coughs> and it's better, okay? I will insert a bunch of pictures either at the end of this one because, whoo, y'all, this one's already... <laughs> Thank y'all for hanging in there with me. It may be at the end of the next one that I will do all the pictures and show y'all a lot of things. Y'all catch my video, Homemade Lunchables, okay? Where I showed you what I put in there for my granddaughter's lunches and then how at that time we had a long commute to school and I fixed like a breakfast lunch box. So they got in the truck, they got set down, they got I got their truck 
trees out. They put their breakfast container on their tray, opened it up, sat there and ate their breakfast on the way to school. See, you can do that. You gotta find a way to get a good breakfast in your kids. Y'all, you can make oatmeal and put it in the thermos, okay? Jazz up their oatmeal and t tell them how to put their fruit down inside their oatmeal, okay? When they, when they get ready for lunch. They can take oatmeal, y'all, for lunch. I just gave y'all a bunch of sandwichy ideas, but jazzing them up, warm lunch ideas, things you probably never thought of to send to school lunches, and then healthy things, y'all, fruits and snacks and vegetables. There you go. Lunches do not have to be boring, okay? The next video, probably, I'm not going to be able to attach these. It's going to be way too long. So, video number two, stay tuned. I'm going to show you all my essentials, all my things, give you some more ideas, let you see and invest in, y'all, and some things that you can, you can invest in. And, like I said, don't skip on the lunch boxes, don't skimp on the thermoses or the water bottles, because you want them to last last a long time and you may not have to purchase them again the next y'all they don't have to have a new lunch box every stinking year unless they lose it okay make your money stretch y'all okay they don't have to have brand new stuff every single year okay if it worked last year that backpack that lunch box that water bottle if it's still working that thermos use it again the next year i'm sorry but you can make your money last you a little longer okay now the clothes they gonna outgrow you're gonna have to buy new school clothes but some things you don't have to buy all brand new okay i hope y'all start getting creative adult lunches i just gave you some ideas of some things that you can take instead of eating those sandwiches all the time and spending that money because the guys are going there i don't want to look like a weirdo or an oddball i better go grab me something too you know stop it okay so let's start enjoying our lunches and get to making good lunches and i will see y'all in video two okay